is the Big Bang for each new dimension that it pops open. And so it's like the Big Bang was like, you know, something imploding into creating its own new, like where we are. No one knows the way but your damn self. People try to lend a hand, but they can't help. You gotta pick and choose. We are wearing different shoes. Be a bigger you. Go and get it. Never hand out. Come back to another episode of RX Fit Tip. What we do here is we talk about fitness and tips about fitness. My name is, my name is Benny Oliver. <laughs> Here's Benny Oliver. I qualify myself a little bit. I've been involved in athletics since I was a kid. Did track and field in high school and college. Uh, shot put specifically, not, not 100. All track, yeah, yeah. You were running the 100 or, meters. Or, or the steeplechase. I, I didn't dabble in that at all. I, I watched people fall. But I'm going to qualify Danny here, who is the owner and Mr. RX Fit himself. The owner of RX Fit, which is a personal training company. Um, he also has a background in biology and knowing a lot of random facts. And the reason that we're here today is we are here to talk about the immune system. Ooh. Which I think is a, is a very, very good topic to jump into. Beginning of the fall months of the year, people started to get allergies, a little colds come in. You do need a strong immune system. And that's what we're here to talk about, is, is, is the immune system. You know, uh, there's all this emergency out there. There's all of these preventative measures of, I, I'm, a, I'm a believer of taking care of things on the front end and prevent you from having to take all this stuff. So what are, what are some different ways to up your immune system? What are some different ways to stay healthy throughout the seasons where you see a lot of people grabbing the tissue and making sure it's the aloe vera plus with lotion? Let's start off with a little callback from a previous episode, the metabolism episode. There we go. So immune system is a lot like the metabolism where it's mm -hmm. not really upping it, you're just creating it to be more efficient, essentially, right? Like it's always okay. working, it's always doing its job. It doesn't matter okay. if you're like triathlon, or triathlon, you can't be a triathlon. If you're a triathlete, <laughs> <laughs> or if you have cancer, or you're just badass, whatever. They're, it's always working. It's never like, oh, I have, you know, uh, my immune system's not doing anything. It's always doing something. It's just okay. how many battles it, is it fighting at one time, right? So like, this is the argument against inflammation, essentially. Like when you're inflamed constantly, inflamed, let's just say that you're gluten intolerant, you're dairy intolerant, there's mold in your house. All these things have been popping up over the last 10 years that people have been talking about that have been messing with their allergies. Mm -hmm. And allergies are even technically a sickness. It's just a res immune response, you know, to okay. like um, environmental factors, but not necessarily a bacteria or a virus. Right. But it does mess with your immune system because if you're responding to allergies, you're vulnerable to an actual bacteria or virus because you're mm. inciting, quote unquote, something else completely entirely. Okay. It's about reducing the battles that your immune system has to fight on a daily basis. Mm. Uh, so I would say, first and foremost, that reduce the amount of battles it has to fight. That meaning. Take the inflammatories out of your diet. I talked about this a lot during my programming and my training. Take out, you know, peanuts, soy, uh, gluten, corn, dairy, all these things that are hard on your intestinal tract. Why that matters so much? Like, I will talk about the, your digestive system a lot when I talk about the immune system because more than half of your immune system is your own gut flora. It's just, it's, and gut flora is just a fancy term for it bacteria in your intestines. So we have a symbiotic relationship with a lot of bacteria in our body that help us. Like, a lot, in fact, keeps us alive. Kind of like mushrooms do with trees. I don't mm -hmm. know if I've made that comparison in the past, but they have a symbiotic relationship as well. So like we have, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've told, mentioned it with you, but I'm not sure if it's on record. True. Where like trees live a thousand years, so they don't get to genetically evolve, uh, evolve that past tense, current tense. I've had a lot of caffeine and it's fucking me <laughs> I'm like trying to slow my brain down as I'm talking, I'm like, dude, you're going too far. <laughs> So they don't genetically evolve very quickly because they live for a thousand years. By the time they make another sampling, you know, it takes time and stuff. And mm -hmm. oh, well, oh, that makes you know, sense. They can live a long time, okay. and they're not changing very much over a thousand years, right? Oh, okay, wow. So they need something to defend them against these new like insects and and bacteria and all these things that are coming out to kill the tree. Mm -hmm. It needs defenses against that, so they created a symbiotic relationship with mushrooms. Mushrooms will go out there and climb them up them, and you know, take in the sun because they're higher now. They're using the tree as support, and they will bite off bacteria and insects and all that stuff mm -hmm. you know, while they're taking nutrients from the tree and then just kind of keep each other alive that way. Uh, because fungus evolve almost infinitely. Like every new cell is an evolved form of that fungus. It's mm -hmm. a fascinating structure. Oh. I would love to have an episode just on fungus actually. But okay. It won't be a very popular episode because people are freaked out by fungus. It'll be a fun one. Yeah. So mushrooms are great. Eat a lot of mushrooms. Fungi. And oh, so we have that relationship with bacteria, and it's very important to keep the good bacteria alive and kill off the bad bacteria. Okay. And that that bad bacteria is a lot of stuff that we consume in fast food, we consume in, in prepackaged goods. It's things that don't really care about us staying alive. That's mm -hmm. anything bad. That's bad. It's like, okay. hey, if you stay alive or you die, we don't really care. We just want to consume whatever out of you. <laughs> and the good bacteria is like, dude, we're having fun living here, You're giving us a lot of great stuff, and we're gonna pay you back by killing off that bacteria, nice. uh, the bacteria, the bad stuff. Or we're gonna, you know, we can kill off that, help you kill off that virus, or 
we're going to break down the stuff that you can't break down in your colon, right? Mm -hmm. Because you don't have the cellular structure, but we do. Uh, and we'll, you know, break down the down resources you can consume. Um, and then they, in return, get like to, you know, eat some nutrients and have some fat and whatever, right? They right. Just live off right. Of that. But they don't, they, you know, they help us out. They help you out. And and that's what that's really what's what's going on at the end of the day. Like you can talk about white blood cells, you can talk about platelets, but that stuff's going to be happening all the time anyways. Mm -hmm. And you don't really have to worry about that. It's going to be work. Generally, unless you have some kind of blood. I'm not a doctor. I don't play one on the internet. I don't. You know, I'm not gonna get into that world. He's gonna be a doctor for Halloween though. <laughs> yeah, so I am totally qualified. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Danny to the ground. Now I need to do that so that way. To surgery. A picture for the ground. Put <laughs> for the gram. For the gram. And so what does that look like? I think you brought up before probiotics. Probiotics. You put probiotics. Okay, okay. Yeah. It's probiotics. So probiotics, things that feed bacteria. Right. Now, okay. The nutritionist JJ Burge ran into a situation with one of her, it was actually, and that's a name drop or call her out, but Susan Sarandon's daughter went to this uh, nutritionist, JJ Virgin, mm -hmm. in Hollywood. And she noticed that she had, she was great, great physical condition, worked out an hour every single day, looked fantastic, ate great, and just had like this, this, this bulge on the bottom of her stomach like she was like four months pregnant all the time. And she's mm -hmm. like, why the heck is this here? You know, I work out all the time and I eat great. And she's like, well, have you tried, you know, probiotics and yogurt? And she was like, yeah, of course, I do it all the time. And finding out that the probiotics was actually feeding bad gut flora in her stomach, which was causing like extra gas, which was causing inflammation in that part of the intestinal tract. Uh -huh. And so what she did instead was take out probiotics entirely, put in prebiotics, and introduce a healthier gut bacteria into her colon, um, like lactobacillus, it made all the inflammation go away. And it was like, can we clean it up? Where can you get this prebacteria? What are what are some different forms of it? Where could somebody- Just look up lact lactobacillus and um, <clears throat> go to Amazon or something like that. Okay, is that but, is that something that's specific to, like, is it like a supplement or can you find it in other foods? Is, as far as I know right now, I think supplementation is the only route you okay. can actually go with that. Okay. And there are lots of different forms of good gut flora you can take in the body, and it's gonna react different from everybody as well. Mm -hmm. So just keep that in mind and do your own research. Just because you're taking probiotics doesn't mean you're feeding the right bacteria. Okay. Right? Ideally, I don't even recommend probiotics. If you're eating a pretty balanced, healthy diet, then you should be feeding your bacteria good stuff anyways. Mm -hmm. So you wanna make sure you have the right bacteria in there. And then, to make a statement here about how strong gut flora is, there was a research done with really about 15 people. They were all overweight, kind of unhealthy, pre-diabetic kind of patients that they were searching for they put into this mm -hmm. group. And then they all gave them, the, uh, in pill form, the gut flora of a like triathlete, badass, runs every single day, you know, eats healthy his entire life, great genetics, everything. And they're like, well, let's see what happens if we introduce like his entire, his entire flora, right? Every single bacteria he has in his intestinal tract to all these people and see what happens, right? So how does it change them? At the end of the study, they all have positive results. And those results were anywhere from like, I just feel better to I lost 15 pounds, mm -hmm. right? That introducing that good gut flora wiped out the bad, kind of created new colonies and increased like their good habits, like good cravings, the food habits yeah. that they had, <clears throat> made them feel better, can increase their energy, increase their immune system. I mean, that is phenomenal results just from a gut flora. So that's how powerful of an impact it can have on you and something I highly recommend making changes to your diet. How can, so just by simply changing my diet, I can uh, produce or introduce uh, gut flora, wanted yeah. gut flora? Absolutely. It's just by changing your diet. Now, best thing you can probably do is bring in cruciferous vegetables. It's, okay. I, I can't even stress enough bringing in cruciferous vegetables are like, it's all your dense uh, vegetables. Your, your, broccoli. Your, of course, broccoli, broccolini, Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, uh -huh. all the stuff that you kind of have to cook a little bit to get a little softer so you can mm -hmm. eat it. Otherwise, it's like crunch, feels like you're eating bark. Uh, Where does the celery fall, fall there? No, definitely no, not. No, no, no. Okay. Celery is basically fruit as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> <laughs> Just, Danny, Danny just looks down on celery. Just, <laughs> it might as well be a fruit. It, it might as well have seeds. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that sounds like a uh, pretty, pretty good show. You brought um, Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna wrap it up a little bit. So, uh, when it comes to your immune system, we can agree that uh, just essentially take care of your body, and it's gonna take care of you. Um, some sure. different ways we can, we can do that is with our digestive tract, which is where our gut flora exist or aka uh, gut bacteria mm -hmm. uh, we can change that and manipulate that by the different foods that we eat because that will determine the different cravings that are coming mm -hmm. and we also want to have our quote unquote good bacteria uh, we want to feed them and also increase them by with our foods so then they can fight off the bacteria that's in our gut that we don't want that is producing the different cravings which brings on the food that uh, diminishes our immune system mm -hmm. so just by focusing on what we're putting in, you can kind of determine how we're gonna feel. Yeah, absolutely. So, pretty cool. You have an entire civilization inside of you. Yeah. And you're as God, and you need to take care of it. Worship me, <laughs> worship me, bacteria. Here, all right, that's it for RxFit Tips. We'll catch you next episode.
And if you want to leave me questions or comments, please go to our at rxfitco and uh, please leave that there. We'll cover all that information in that channel. Uh, this has been Benny Oliver. I'm Benny Oliver. I am Danny Trejo, and that yeah. is my coffee maker. Thanks, guys. On Instagram. Next time. I'm feeling bad for people that live in front of weekend. The type that want to be dreaming but never got to see them. What a boring story. Being worried about conforming, working and snoring would end up forcing me right off the deep end. I came to gain a brain and make a couple bucks. Provide for those who've been riding close.